Well, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Hey, aren't those Olivetians incredible? I wish you'd give them a round of applause one more time. I told them if one of them goes down, just give Pastor Mark the nod and he'll step right up for them, but they didn't take me up on it. And you know Mark can sing, right? You've seen the YouTube videos about the dog and the possum, I think the last one was. If you ever wonder what Pastor Mark does all day, get on YouTube and write in his name. (laughs) It'll change your life. Hey, we're on a new series that I'm excited about. The series is called Go Fish, and the whole idea is it fits into the mission of our church, which is Reach, Grow, Serve. And we're going to be, in the next few weeks, focusing in on the reach part. Uh, We believe this as a church, that God has commanded every one of us to go outside of these walls and reach people for Jesus Christ. Now, even as I begin talking about that, isn't that funny how it makes some of us a little bit nervous? I mean, we start to get a little bit antsy, and, and I know there's new people here today, and I know you're thinking, you got to be kidding, I come the first Sunday, and this is what they're going to talk about, because this is everything that you don't like about churches, is that they're always trying to grab a hold of you and pull them into their place, right? And some of you who brought people to church are thinking, oh, I can't believe I brought them this service. But I'll tell you, I just want you to stick with me on this. We're going to be going through a whole series, and it's not going to be what you think. But I'm absolutely convinced of this, that Jesus has called every one of us to go out into this world and point people to Jesus Christ. We're going to be talking about that. If you have your Bibles, open up the book of Mark. Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 19, and we'll be diving into this. Mark chapter 1 says this, After John was put in prison... Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. I want to stop there for a second. That word repent there is pretty significant. Because whenever God was about to do something, whenever God was about to reveal himself, whenever God was about to intervene in somebody's situation, he commanded his people to repent. And so here was Jesus, he was going around preaching the good news about the kingdom of God being near, and he goes to these people and he commands them to repent. And what he was saying to them is, hey, listen guys, I'm about to do something significant. The kingdom of God is near, something is about to happen, and I don't want any of you to miss it. And so repent. I have with me today uh, an arrowhead. Told my boys I found it in the backyard today. They were pretty excited about it. But I didn't find it in my backyard. Um, I told them later I didn't. But I have an arrowhead. And I had a man in my last church who uh, would find hundreds of these arrowheads. I mean, hundreds of them. He would go out into the pastures of these fields. And and he knew exactly where to look. And and he would come home with with dozens of them. And he has this huge collection of arrowheads. In fact, when I moved, he gave me a, a whole box of arrowheads. And I remember saying to him once, I said, Oscar, I said, I gotta be honest with you, man, I I think that's pretty cool that you find these, but I'm telling you, I've lived in North Dakota my whole life, and I've never found an arrowhead. You know what he said? Words of wisdom from Oscar. Well, Mike, you never found an arrowhead because you never looked for an arrowhead. (laughs) True, I never did. And he found them because he went out and looked for them. And what Jesus was telling these guys is, hey, listen, I want you to keep your eyes open. I want you to keep your hearts open. I want you to be looking for what I'm about to do. I want you to make sure that your heart is focused on me. And I want you to be watching because I'm about to do something. I'm absolutely convinced of this, you guys. There's so many people in the church today that completely miss out on what God is doing. You know why? Not because they're bad people. It's because they're not looking for it. They're not anticipating God to do something. I'm telling you, God is doing great things in our church, isn't he? I mean, every week it just seems like God is blessing us and new people are coming. And I'm, 
I'm telling you, I'm having a hard time keeping up with, with all that's going on in this church because God just seems to be outpouring his best, but I'm telling you, there's people that are missing it. There's people that come sit Sunday after Sunday and they completely miss, and I'm convinced of this. It's because they're not looking. They're not anticipating God to do something. And so my challenge before we dive into this Go Fish series, the whole idea of being used by Jesus to reach people for Jesus, I want to challenge all of you, don't miss it. And maybe today, as we dive into the series, today would be a good day to make sure that your heart is lined up with God's heart. Maybe today would be a good day that if you've got any junk in your life that shouldn't be there and it's interfering with your relationship with God, or maybe you have bad relationships with people, maybe today you ought to take care of it. Because I'm so convinced of this. October 6th, we're, we're starting new services. We're, we're moving a group over to the gym, and, and we just got some neat things going on. I don't want anybody to miss it. And so maybe today, as we dive into the series, we ought to just say, God, I want to make sure I'm looking to see what you're going to do, that my heart is right, that my heart is prepared for whatever you have to do. Well, it goes on in verse 16, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew cast a net into the lake. And Mark just wanted to make sure <laughs> we knew this, for they were, say it with me, fishermen, all right? That's why they were doing it. They were out casting their nets in the lake because this is what these guys did. They fished. It was their livelihood. It was their occupation. They were good at it. And so these guys were out casting their lakes. And then Jesus says this, and it changed their whole lives. Come follow me, Jesus said. And I will make you fishers of men. This is the unbelievable part. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, farther, he saw James and John, sons of Zebedee, preparing their nets. And so right up front, when Jesus has this encounter with these guys, these guys who were out doing their occupation, ordinary people. In fact, we find out later in Scripture that they were uneducated. They weren't the... They weren't the best of the best. They were just your average guys out fishing. Jesus went up to them, and right away he gives them his agenda of what he's going to do in their lives. And here's Jesus' agenda. It wasn't, I'm going to make you more spiritual. Now listen, if I was going to people and I was going to say, hey, listen, you're going to come follow me and I'm going to change your life and, and we're going to be our... We're going to be disciples, and we're going to do what God wants us to do. I'd say, you know what? We're going to make you more spiritual. We try to do that in the church, don't we? Do you know our, one of our goals as a church is to make you more spiritual? That's one of the things we really strive at in the church, isn't it? I mean, husbands, let's be honest. How many times has your wife just been completely disappointed in you because you weren't that spiritual? So one of the things we work at, and there's nothing wrong with that. Listen, I'm not dog in that but Jesus didn't say I'm going to make you more spiritual he didn't say I will make you more holy now listen is it good to be holy scripture makes it very clear you know without holiness no man will see the Lord uh, one of the things I love about the church of the Nazarene is I believe that God has called us to be holy people it doesn't mean perfect but God wants to make us more and more like Jesus every day but Jesus, at this point, in the whole meeting with these new guys, he didn't say, I'm going to make you holy. He didn't say, I'm going to make you more prosperous. He said, I will make you fishers of men. <laughs> now, take this out of fairy tale land. Here were these guys who their livelihood was fishing for fish. They were good at it. It's what they did. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes and... and <laughs> He says, listen, guys, you're no longer going to fish for fish. You're going to fish for people. Could you imagine what was going through their mind at that point? I mean, we're going to fish for people, like set the hook and clean them and throw them on ice and sell them for three bucks a pound, you know? I mean, we don't know what was going through their mind, but it had been just such a strange thing for Jesus. I'm going to make you fish for people. But as we find out later in the story, that's exactly what happened with them. I mean, these ordinary people, in fact, we find that Jesus called fishermen, but he also called tax collectors, he called sinners, he called prostitutes. He called people who were demon-possessed, he called people who were lame. He called people who were rich, he called people who were poor. He called people from all walks of lives, and, 
And they began to follow Jesus. And as they followed Jesus, Jesus did exactly what he said he's going to do in them. And he made them into fishers of men. And those people that Jesus got a hold of, these disciples, they went out and caught people. They told people about the good news of Jesus Christ. And those people responded to it and said yes to Jesus. And you know what those people began to do? They began to go out and fish for people. And they began to tell their stories about Jesus, how Jesus had changed their lives. And, and those people accepted Jesus. And you know what they did? They decided to go out and fish as well. And here we are more than 2,000 years later. Get this, from this point on, more than 2,000 years later, here we are in Salem, Illinois. In Salem, Illinois, we are worshiping a Jewish carpenter this morning. Because if people decided that, you know what, following Jesus is more than just being spiritual. It's more than just being holy. It's more than just being prosperous. But followers ultimately fish. You see, his goal is for you to do in someone else's life what someone has already done for you. Mark 1.17 says this, Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will say it with me. Make you fishers of men. When we dive into the series, I want to make it clear. Fishing is simply this. It's sharing our unique story of Jesus. At this point, Jesus was not talking about a method. <laughs> Jesus was not talking about method. When it comes to sharing our faith, that scares us, doesn't it? What do we think of? We think of going door to door, knocking on people's doors, carrying the 30-pound Bible underneath our arm. We think of the guy on the corner with the sign, you know, repent. <laughs> We think that we have to muster up enough guts just to go up and, and talk to people that we don't know. And all of these methods come from... But Jesus wasn't talking about a method, you guys. Jesus wasn't saying, hey, we're going to sit down in a class and we're going to go through the A, Bs, and Cs of salvation and I'm going to teach you how to reach people. He wasn't talking about that. Jesus was talking about a process. And eventually, true followers fish. What's neat about this story in the book of Mark is there's another... There's another uh, version of the story in the book of Luke. And the story goes, Jesus was out teaching and preaching, and he comes across the boat sitting in the water, and he hops in the boat, and he goes out a little bit, and, and there's, uh, there's Peter out fishing. Or Peter was cleaning his nets. And, and Scripture says that they've been fishing all night and hadn't caught a thing. And Jesus says, you know what, you guys go out a little bit further and, and cast your nets out. And could you imagine Andrew and Peter thinking, who does this guy think he is? I mean, we have fished all night. We have fished at the prime time to fish, and, and we are fishermen. We know how to do it. And who does this carpenter think he is telling us how to do it? But they knew that people were following Jesus, and they said, well, because you tell us to do it, we're going to do it. And they went out, and some of you know the story. They cast their nets out, and they caught such a big load of fish that they couldn't pull them all in. And then Jesus said, hey, I want you guys to come follow me because I will make you fishers of men. And that version in the book of Luke, those guys said, hey, listen, we will follow you. I mean, we will drop everything. And, and I read that story, and I wonder, probably they began to follow him, probably because of selfish reasons, right? I mean, they just saw this incredible miracle, how they were out fishing all night, hadn't caught a thing, and then Jesus told them to go do it, and they did it, and they caught a load of fish, and they said, we're going to follow this guy. Where he tells us to go, I'm going to go. And they probably did it for selfish reasons. But the reality is, is all of us probably began following Jesus for selfish reasons, right? I mean, maybe your marriage was a wreck. You're at the end of your rope, and you just thought, man, I don't know where to turn, but somebody told me about Jesus, and so I'm going to turn to him. Maybe for some of you, it's just some family issues that you're going through, and maybe you're a dad or a mom, and, and you're just wrestling with some issues, and you didn't know which way to turn, but you knew that, man, somebody told you about Jesus, and so you're going to turn to him. For some of you, might have had a tragedy. Maybe some of you, like me, you just, you didn't want to go to hell, you know? And so, man, if this is my way out, I'm going to accept Jesus into my life, but the reality is many of us have done it for selfish reasons, and Jesus is okay with that. But he's saying, listen, I'm not going to leave you there. I mean, you may have come to me for selfish reasons, but I'm going to make you into something today that you're not. I'm going to begin doing something in you. And so here's what I believe. Jesus wants to take the temporal things in our lives and use them for eternal. The temporary things in our lives, you know what they are, right? 
the things that we pray about often, the things that we get worked up about often, the things that we get excited about. Some of the temporal things are maybe finances. I mean, isn't it something how often we pray about finances? God, would you please bless me? (laughs) God, I'm in a mess. Would you please bless me? We pray about those things, right? But we know this. It's temporary, right? The reality is that someday we're all going to stand before Jesus Christ, and it's not going to matter how much is in our checkbook, right? I mean, we're not bringing bags of cash into heaven with us, are we? We pray about those things. For some of us, some of the temporal things are our health. Isn't it interesting how often we pray for health? And listen, this isn't bad. Jesus commands us to do it. It's okay to pray for our health. But we pray for our health. We pray for our kids' health. But here's the reality. I looked in the mirror this morning. Last few years have been tough on Mike. (laughs) All right? Our bodies eventually fall apart, don't they? I mean, we're just temporary, you know? Uh, We're just temporary. Someday... It's a reality. Someday Mike's, Mike's body is going to completely fall apart and I'm going to leave this world. But we pray for those things, don't we? I mean, we pray for the health of our kids, and we do. We pray for our kids all the time. And God, would you just take care of our kids? Would you keep them safe? Would you bless them? Would you out? The reality is, and we don't like to talk about this, but someday our kids aren't going to be with us anymore. But we pray for those things, they're temporary. Another thing that we get worked up over is our image. Not only how we look, but how we fit in with our society, how we fit in with our friends, how we fit in at work, how we fit in this world, and we get worked up over these things. But the reality is that it's not going to last forever. Our careers, these are our temporal things. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 2, it says this, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And so my challenge for all of us is we do get worked up over those things, but you know what I want to get worked up over, you guys? And this is just kind of setting the stage for this whole series. I want to get worked up over the things that matter in eternity. I want to get worked up over the things that really matter well beyond my career, well beyond my health, well beyond my finances. I want to know that my kids are going to go to heaven someday. I want to know that my neighbors are going to heaven someday. Because those are the things that ultimately matter. I know that many of you look at me and you think, well, when it comes to out witnessing and sharing our faith, many people look at pastors, and you do this. I've heard it from some of you. You just say, well, you're a pastor, you know. you got to be good at it, you know. I mean, you can reach people that we can't reach. That's what many people think, and... And many times when, when somebody wants to see somebody saved, they grab the pastor and say, well, you've got to come meet with this person. As if we just got that golden touch, you know. And i got to be honest, I look at many of you and I think, man, you guys got such an advantage over me. I mean, you can reach people that I can't reach. I mean, you can connect with people that I can't. Because people just assume that about me. When a pastor walks into a room, conversations change. Trust me, they do. A couple years ago, I walked into a park, saw a man across the park over at picnic table, and he's a friend of mine who went to the church, grew up in the church, and he was holding a can of beer. He's holding a can of beer. He's a friend of mine. I'm just going to go say hi to him. So I walked clear across the park, and and I'll never forget this. My friend who's holding the beer, talking to all his buddies, when I came into his view, he did this. (laughs) Well, Pastor Mike, you know, good to see you. And I thought, this is good. I'm going to make this guy hold that behind his back as long as I possibly can. (laughs) And I talked to that man for about 45 minutes. I just was bringing up everything. And I'm not kidding you, the whole time, he didn't do that around other people. I can remember when I joined the fire department. I told the chief, hey, listen, I'd like to be part of the fire department. I'd like to fill out an application. And 
Chief Burley, just he became a good friend of mine. I can never forget over the phone what he said. Well, Mike, we're a, we're a rough group of guys. I said, well, what does that mean? <laughs> you know? He said, well, we drink, we cuss, we do all the things that you don't do, you know? I'm just not, as I said, Randy, I've grown up in the real world, you know, but it just made him nervous. And I can remember walking into the fire hall for the first time, and, and around the corner was the chief, and he's telling the most, I mean, the dirtiest joke you can imagine. And I thought, this is perfect, you know. And I can remember walking around the corner into the door in the middle of this dirty joke, and all of a sudden his eyes got about that big. And he straightened up, oh, Pastor Mike. And the whole room just changed. It got quiet. Pastors have that effect on people. We make people nervous. And so I say all of that to say, listen, I look at you guys, and <laughs> that doesn't happen with you guys. I mean, you guys have influence on people that I never could have. You have relationships that, you know what, maybe I never could have. But we do that with each other, don't we? Man, I wish I had so-and-so's personality. They would be good at it. Oh, I wish I could connect with... But here's the reality, and I want us to grasp this. That Jesus today wants to take all your circumstances, all your issues, all your upbringing, your whole life, and I believe this, that he can use it to reach people that I never could. He could use it to reach people that the person to the right of you or the left of you never could. But God can take your circumstances, your situation, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything about you, and he can leverage it to use it to reach somebody for Jesus Christ. And so here's going to be my prayer for the rest of this series. And I'd like it to be yours as well. Jesus, use my life experiences, and I will be looking for opportunities to fish. Jesus, take my life experiences. Because all of us have life experiences, don't we? We have things that make us unique. We have situations in our lives, many of them, that we don't even want to think about. But isn't it something how Jesus can use those things to reach people that I never could? I think you guys know this. I've grown up in the church my whole life from the time I was little. I was born at Bible college. <laughs> I told you, I had the halo on my head when I was born. From the time I was little, I've grown up in church. But you know what? There's people that I can reach that probably you never could reach. And there's people that... In this sanctuary that I know have been through some rough, difficult times, you've lost people, you've lost loved ones, or you've experienced divorce, or, or you've just been through some tragedies in your family, I'm telling you, as your pastor, I believe this, that God can take all of that and use it to make you into a fisher of men. He can use it to fish for people. You see, we all once were fish, and someone fished for you. We're going to do something this month, and I want, you to, I want you not to toss it aside, but I want you to do this with me. Outside in our foyer, we have a sign that says, Fish Stories Told Here. One of the things I don't think we do a great job is tell our fish stories. We once were fish, but somebody in such a unique way took time out of their schedule to connect with us and to reach us for Jesus Christ. And listen, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus and, you, and this all conversation makes you nervous, I'm going to tell you, I'm, be, I'm a believer in this. I don't believe that I'm better than anybody. But I know this. My life is so much better today because of Jesus than it was before. I'm convinced of that. I'm not better than anybody. But I'm so glad that somebody took time and effort to reach into my life. And so I decided to write a thank you letter to that person. And in your worship folders is a, a piece of paper that says fish stories and it says deer and a blank. I'd like you all to grab that real quick. I want you to do something that's a little bit crazy. I want you to write a thank you letter to them. I want you to write this letter and you don't have to send it to them. If you make two of them, you can send it to them. But I want you to write a thank you letter to the person that fished for you that used their unique story, their unique situation, and connected you with Jesus Christ. And I want you to write it, and outside in our foyer, we have a board that says, Fish Stories Told Here. And already we have a few fish stories, and I want to read you mine. Mine says this, 
Dear Dad, I want to take this time to thank you for making it easy for me to follow Jesus. It wasn't a difficult decision for me to follow Christ, and I attribute that to your influence on me. From my earliest memory, you were not only my dad, but my pastor. That sounds strange even writing that. But every Sunday, I had the opportunity to listen to you preach. And what I loved about your preaching is I knew without a shadow of a doubt that you believed everything you were saying up there. I knew it was real in your life. Thank you for living out Monday through Saturday what you preached out on Sunday. I always appreciated how you never put any extra expectations on me just because I was a preacher's kid. You never got caught up in the rules or traditions. You were just caught up in all us kids and Jesus. And so when it came time for me to make a decision to follow Christ on my own, it was a no-brainer. Of course I would follow Jesus. Why wouldn't I? I had a dad that made it so easy for me, and for that, I'm forever grateful to you. Thanks, Dad, for being real, even though you were a preacher. With sincere gratitude, your preacher son, Mike. I tell you, even as I wrote that, emotions stirred up inside of me. <laughs> I mean, just these emotions built up inside of me. You know why? Because it was a big deal to me. And I had a dad that just outpoured his love on me and, again, didn't have any of these crazy expectations of me. But he pointed me to Jesus Christ. And so when it was that time for me to make that decision to follow Jesus, it was easy for me. It was a no-brainer. And as I think about that, it's just a good reminder of, man, if that was such an impact in my life, I got three little kids. <laughs> man, and I, I've told you this before. My kids are making it to heaven, you guys. Do you understand that? My kids are making it to heaven. And that means I want to be like my dad, who decided that following Jesus was not just to be more spiritual or just to be more holy or prosperous, but following Jesus meant something even bigger than that. It meant to fish. And it started in his home. It went to his neighbors. It went to people he had coffee with. And so my challenge for you is to think about that person that, that took that time and effort to point you to Jesus Christ. And I want you to write a thank you letter to them. And I'm telling you, these emotions will just begin to bubble up in you. They will just begin to stir in you. And I want you to take that and I want you to say, I want to be that for somebody else. I want someday somebody to pen a letter saying, man, Mike, thank you. Because we all once were fish too. Look at everybody, bow their heads and close their eyes. Again, I encourage you guys not to, not just to toss that piece of paper aside. I'd, I'd love for you to do that. I think it will really help you through this next series. So we dive in what it means to be a fisher of men. I'm going to have the Olivetians coming up, and they're going to sing a song. And I just want to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And Basically, I'd love for you to make a commitment that, you know what, this next month, you're just going to be open to whatever God says to you when it comes to this issue. The reality is that most of us, we're not very good at it. We're not good at sharing our faith. We're not good about telling others about Jesus. We're not, we're just, we wrestle with it. We have all these fears about it. But what I love about this is Jesus says, listen, you guys, follow me, and I'll make you into something you're not right now. I'll make you into fishers of men. <laughs> and these guys decided to follow Jesus. And what ended up happening is they became exactly that. I know this. There's some of you in here today that you don't have a relationship with Jesus. This is just, I mean, <laughs> this is nuts to you. Some of you probably just said, you know what, Pastor Mike, I just found the book of Mark just now. <laughs> this is all new to me. I don't understand any of this. Listen, again, I want to stress you. I follow Jesus because I love it. Because he made such a difference in my life. And today, you can allow Jesus to make that difference in your life as well. But I'm telling you, when he does that, if you become a true follower of Jesus, he's going to make you into fisher of men. And so maybe as the group sings, let's just respond to God and just ask God, God, would you take my, my good, the bad, the ugly, would you take my life circumstances, would you take everything about me, and would you somehow use it to reach other people for Jesus?
And maybe today, just like uh, finding an arrowhead, <laughs> most of us have never found an arrowhead because we never went looking for it. Maybe some of us have never reached somebody for Jesus Christ because we were never out looking for it. And so let's just ask God to do that in our lives today.